as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, one of the issues that I have with Western medicine is that it doesn't do a great job of connecting the dots, of connecting apparently at first glance disparate pathologies and understanding how something like insulin resistance or depression could be related. But there's a good amount of literature here, which is also quite compelling. Consider this study, which is titled Insulin Resistance in Brain Alters Dopamine Turnover and Causes Behavioral Disorders. That's quite fascinating. So this is a mouse study in which they knocked out the insulin receptor. Here we demonstrate that mice with a brain-specific knockout of the insulin receptor exhibit brain mitochondrial dysfunction. So here we are back to mitochondria. And this definitely connects insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction with neurotransmitter neuroinflammation. So they exhibit mitochondrial dysfunction with re reduced mitochondrial oxidative activity, increased levels of reactive oxygen species, and increased levels of lipid and protein oxidation in the striatum and the nucleus accumbens. Those are different regions of the brain. They say, as a result, NIRKO mice, NERCO, which is those who have had knockout of the insulin receptor, mice develop age-related anxiety and depressive-like behaviors that can be reversed by treatment with MAO inhibitors, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, as well as the tricyclic antidepressants imipramine, which inhibits MAO activity and reduces oxidative stress. So those two are sort of old school antidepressive medications within mainstream psychiatry that do affect serotonergic signaling and perhaps dopaminergic signaling to some degree within the brain. They say thus insulin resistance in the brain induces mitochondrial and dopaminergic dysfunction leading to anxiety and depressive like behaviors demonstrating a potential molecular link between central insulin between central insulin resistance and behavioral disorders well how many people have insulin resistance in the world i think the numbers are pretty similar to depression not that they're all overlapping but there's 400 million plus and i think the number is at least a billion it's got to be much more than that we know that in the united states the majority of people are metabolically unwell. So is it possible that something about insulin resistance, which we know is going to decrease the ability of insulin to signal within the brain, insulin is a peptide hormone that also signals within the brain. It has effects on the kidney, ret retention of electrolytes, which is something I've talked about in the past. It has effects on the muscles, the liver, and the brain. Insulin is an important hormone everywhere. And if you're insulin resistant, all of your signals are going to get turned down everywhere. If insulin can't do its signaling within the brain, then you're looking at molecular mechanisms and mitochondrial dysfunction in the brain. Could that lead to inflammation? Yes, it certainly appears to lead to at least oxidative stress, reactive oxygen species. Could it lead to microglial cell activation? Yes, it could. So here's a connection between insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction, and psychological or at least neurological disorders. Is it possible that for many people who have metabolic dysfunction, which is the majority of the US population, because guess what? If you go to the grocery store, I think at least 75% of what's in there is processed sugars and seed oils. Is it any wonder that everyone is sick and no one can get well? Um, is it possible that those who demonstrate metabolic dysfunction and have a coexisting weakness or coexisting Achilles heel in terms of their mental health and then demonstrating anxiety or depressive behaviors in connection with the metabolic dysfunction? And is it then possible <laughs> that perhaps treating their metabolic dysfunction could lead to improvements? I would say yes. And I think this is where Western medicine needs to go in the treatment of these disorders. Here's another paper, insulin resistance as a shared mechanism between depression and type two diabetes. Well, there you go, February, 2019. They say in this article, we briefly review possible molecular mechanisms associating defective brain insulin signal signaling with reward system, neurogenesis, synaptic plasticity, and the hypothalamic pituitary axis uh, and stress in depression and the stress axis in depression. We further discuss the involvement of TNF alpha. We've heard about that before promoting defective insulin signaling and depressive like behavior in rodent models. So is it possible that the TNF alpha, that some sort of cytokine is connecting the system and causing insulin resistance or worsening insulin resistance in the brain? Again, we're back to the question of where does this inflammation come from? They make this important point. Insulin has been implicated with diverse central, that is within the brain roles, like modulating feeding behavior, energy maintenance by the hypothalamus, as well as memory-related processes by the hippocampus. Insulin receptors are expressed throughout the brain, including regions classically involved with mood regulation, such as the nucleus accumbens, the ventral tegmental area, the amygdala, the raphe nuclei, uh, and knockdown of insulin receptors in the hypothalamus of rats triggered depression and anxiety-like behaviors. That is the study that I just showed you uh, in the previous slide. They say, they go on to talk about the HPA axis. They go on to talk about TNF alpha. And they go on to talk about a Bavarian cohort with a history of depression, having elevated levels of TNF alpha, 
two isoforms of the soluble TNF-alpha receptor and diabetes were commonly observed. There's an association there. And so here we go again in a cohort of patients with comorbid, comorbid depression and type 2 diabetes. Metformin, which has an interesting mechanism that I won't go into in this podcast, was reported to ameliorate depressive behavior when compared to baseline. Is it possible that treating insulin resistance, whether with dietary interventions or with pharmaceuticals, could then improve depression in some individuals? That might suggest that to be the case. Rosaglitazone, which is a pia, um, which is a rosaglitazone, which is a diazolidinedione type of drug, does improve insulin sensitivity. Now, interestingly, drugs that improve insulin sensitivity also tend to make people fat. Um, but it does improve insulin sensitivity. It's not a drug that I'm a huge fan of, but it does provide some antidepressant-like effect in mouse models of depression and type 2 diabetes. So there's some overlap there within the literature. And again, we're talking about connections between insulin resistance and major depressive disorders. Uh, I don't think many psychiatrists are talking about this or thinking about what their patients are eating or getting a fasting insulin on their patients. 